Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you in another video. All right, so first of all, I want to thank all of my subscribers before I do anything else because I just reached 444 subscribers. So that's definitely a milestone for me to say the least, given the number. Um, second thing up is I'm now on Pixiv. So I don't know if you can follow me on B at BDF44 on Pixiv, but you can spell BDF and then spell out 44 um, on Pixiv and check out. Um, my third art gallery that I've set up today uh, I've been on a mission for that all day with that all day long as you guys have probably been following if you've been following these therapy sessions uh, that I've been doing today well I didn't even get a chance to listen to the last therapy session before having another one to make which is better a good one um, in regards to the situation itself so after I finished talking to you guys I believe the situation was um, haven't I hadn't yet uh, addressed the cow fresh SARS 7 situation SARS 7 it's no S on the end of that but um, you know I was in between trying to figure it out I knew I had to go back on the website try to figure out if I could um, submit the information so that I could keep my cow fresh stuff going on for the month so after I finished that with you guys I got back to it I sat back down and tried to uh, log into their website uh, or at least one of the many websites that they had connected to CalFresh. One of them wouldn't let me log in at all by way of Microsoft. I don't know what's going on with Microsoft, but they were telling me essentially that my uh, my email is not actually in L.A. County or something. I don't know what was going on with the, with the DPSS website in regards to that. Um, so I had to call back again and sat there for a good 40 minutes the first time. This The second time, you'll get the point. But uh, this 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 part of the call was the first 40 minutes <laughs> where I was able to speak with a lady in regards to that specific situation. And she told me how to uh, submit the information. And then from there, just she took care of it entirely. Like as we began to uh, kind of get into the information, she was like, you know what? We still a lot of time left. I can try to submit this for you myself rather than you having to sign anything or, or send anything rather. So I was like, OK, let's let's go through that process. So we went through that process. Um, and it took about, like I said, 40 minutes. And then from there, after that, she was like, look, you you know, after I had gotten her all, all of my information out to her in regards to what my situation is, she was like, OK, let me let me send you over to general relief, because since you have applied for SSI at this point, you have CalFresh, you have Medi-Cal, you do qualify for general relief if you qualify for all these things. So let's get you over to that. So she kept me. She, she told me to stay on the line. And then I proceeded to stay on the phone for another, I think, 40, 45 minutes on hold <laughs> uh, so I could get a hold of the general relief lady. And I spoke with her and she was able to apply me for general relief as well. So I was able to take care of everything in regards to my cow fresh. I'm good through the month of August and it shouldn't have any problems for SARS for the next six months. And then um, also apply for general relief. So hopefully I can get some type of cash flow coming this way by way of them in that way until SSI comes through. So that's how that ended. That ended with with me actually being able to hopefully get some general relief as well as my funds, my money um, for for the food. So, yeah, that was I was frustrated, but I told you guys I wasn't going to look at it like it was the worst thing in the world, because at the end of the day, I'm grinding. I'm doing too much to be worried about how bad things were. And I knew I had made that lady sad about my situation, but that's what it looks like when you. I haven't applied faith. I've been applying faith. So I'm not as sad about my situation, more so as focused as I am to get things done that ultimately uh, are, I'm doing. You know what I mean? So it's like if it took this to get me there, then it's just a means to an end. It ain't nothing to be sour over. You believe in the God you believe in and watch him work. And that's what happened. This situation that was only meant to basically frustrate me, it was, which was a eye rolling situation given the fact that all I needed to do was check the right checkbox right so that this never would have happened but because i didn't check that right checkbox all of this tumbled forward to me not only being able to get what i needed with them but also something that i actually really needed so that was a perfect mistake that was l lined up to frustrate me if you look at it at face value lined up to make me cuss people out if you look at it at face value <laughs> And otherwise, the enemy wanted it to be something that would frustrate me because clearly that was absurd. All they had to do was check yes for me when the answer to the question 
had to be written out if the answer was yes. And because the answer was yes, I had written out not only the word yes, but an explanation for the question at hand. Just simply didn't check yes. But that bit of absurdity led to me getting more so of what I needed than I ever would have even applied for. So I think that's the purpose of it all, man. This is why I do the channel I do, because this is the type of grace the Lord has shown me and the type of faith that I apply is what I think others can apply. And I believe that that same grace can either be given to them or something even better if they apply it in the way that I believe I have. And you'll get better results because you won't find yourself in the same hole I'm in. So it's even better for you, I believe. So that's what I'm telling people. It's like, look, you can see what God is doing, even though I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel and barely staying afloat. While I'm down here almost touching fire, he's keeping my butt from actually hitting that fire. And that's how it's always been my entire life. Not to say that I'm entitled to not being burned or that he won't drop me to burn for the rest of eternity if for some reason he sees fit. But the point is he's keeping me afloat for a reason. And that reason is to prove that applying that faith does work this way. It's not just because he loves me so damn much. It's because he knows all of you are watching I do believe that, and I'm intent on proving that he not only exists, but that applying faith to hard times will get you through them. While believing in a God that really will provide you some type of grace specific to your situation. So that's what it is, man. And and I don't think a lot of people apply the faith the way that I think will get them the results that they're looking for. And I'm one of those people who hadn't done that up until a point until I realized what would get me there. And it was unselfish prayer. Not taking on the worst of things as I was saying in the previous therapy session. And, and thinking of others in the presence of your own suffering so you can have more to root for rather than just taking on the worst of the brunt of your problems. Now, if I was thinking about all the brunt of my issues, I would have taken that paperwork, ripped it up, and then proceeded to just say, forget it. And the only thing, and I mean the only thing that kept me from doing that, was God's blessings upon my life helping me understand that that was not an option because I need that cow fresh benefit. <laughs> So he gave me the strength to not only address it, but to be patient in doing so. And as a result, I not only got what I needed, but much more of what I needed than what was initially supposed to be addressed in the situation. So let that be the fullness of what these two therapy sessions have shown us. Before I knew what the blessing would be based on the circumstance and how I handled it. And now seeing as the blessing played itself off playing itself out knowing that the better energy was the more accurate energy whatever frustration i had for them doing whatever they did me staying calm about it ultimately was how to play it knowing what ended up happening in the future and that's how it always goes your anxiety your brash energy that that energy that makes you think you know of what's going to happen without any sort of understanding you know thinking you a psychic a lot of that stuff will ultimately coerce you into the worst of circumstances not your calm energy as whatever happens is playing itself out many a time many a time my mind and we've seen this on camera a lot with me many a time my mind has told me to stress out or to be negative about something and i let my faith guide me away from that and the future told the story that the faith was ultimately right more times than not way more times than not and i try to carry that with me every time i think about having a natural reaction to negative things that come my way a natural run-of-the-mill reaction to things that look like a disappointment because at the end of the day you can't really see what's coming around that corner but you can damn sure know that if it's good and you're acting a fool you're not going to be able to catch it or be right for it when it comes your way <laughs> you're going to rebuke something that is likely meant for your benefit because you're in a bad mood about something that was meant to, to coerce you away from being in a good mood when something good comes. And so when you see those steps and you apply that wisdom, it's just chestnut checkers. You'd be like, yo, yes, that's meant to make me act up. And I'm not going to act up because I'm wise enough to know that the very essence of not acting up is going to be what's best for the future at hand. And it always is. So that's what I'm here to tell people, man. Keep that wisdom about you. Many a person has made a mistake thinking they are psychic and had to react to things the way the world tell them the word react to things when they're upset. That is not going to coerce you into spaces where the best possible outcome is your future. What's going to do that is your calm energy, your belief in a Holy Spirit that resides in your heart and in your mind. When you believe in a God that's greater than yourself and then from there, the patience to allow his grace and love upon your heart to get you through the circumstances you're in. 
to know that it is not his dream to see you suffer, but that of the enemy's dream to see you suffer. And if you play the enemy's game or you sing the enemy's song, you're going to get the enemy's results. And so that's what it really comes down to. If you do what God wants you to do, regardless of what the world is throwing at you, you're going to get God's results. And that's the moral of the story, man. Remember the analogy about the gnat flying around your head? It's going to make you slap yourself. It's going to make you tear up everything in your house. But if you just don't react to it, you won't tear up anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then from there, um, your compassion will allow you to have a peaceful situation. Or if you let it land and you don't want to be compassionate, you let it land, then you can get it. But nothing's going to happen if you keep swinging around and doing all that. All you're going to do is hit yourself and destroy everything around you. And the gnat will still be flying around because you ain't going to catch it in that way. So, that's what I've come to understand, man. The gnats of life tried to destroy my mood. And all it actually did was coerce me into circumstances where I was able to say praise the Lord. So, that's what I got for you guys. I appreciate everybody for supporting BDL44. 444 subscribers, I think, of all of you guys. When I'm trying to give this content to the world, man. I think everybody who's already here and I appreciate you guys. BDL44, I thank you all for watching. I'm out.